Hey, what's up? My name's Grant Kenoki. I'm a singer, songwriter, producer, and artist, and you're listening to Tower 98.5. Hello everyone, this is writer, director, and illustrator Jason Regusta inviting you to tune in this Monday, September 26th, to hear myself and the amazing Stephen Cuoco talk about my upcoming release of my feature film, Symphony. It's a horror anthology that was born of Clubhouse. I'm going to tell the story of how me and a bunch of other lovely people created this thing. Uh, and you can tune in, like I said, Monday, September 26th at 1 p.m. on Power 98.5 and hear all about it. We hope you'll join us. And uh, until then, have a great day. We don't play the social game. We are social. Power 98.5. You're listening to Power 98.5, powered by United Angels Dream, your number one resource for public relations, entertainment, and multimedia. Contact them today at unitedangelsdream.com. Hi, this is Dan Aykroyd. He's progressive. He's beautiful. He's thoughtful. He's intelligent. He's powerful. He's positive. He is Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. Hi, guys. I'm Sam Fricker. I'm an Australian Olympic diver, and you're listening to Power 98.5. Empowering listeners from the U.S. to the U.K. Live on air with Stephen Cuoco. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and you are live on air with Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. We had the golden opportunity to have interviewed Mr. Oliver Trevina. He's got the Cali water. Him and uh, Ms. Vanessa uh, Hudgens uh, definitely was a great talk this morning. Uh, if you heard that at 10 a.m. Pacific time, if you haven't, uh, take a listen on iHeart, Spotify, uh, Amazon Music, Amazon Audible, and uh, we will have it in the Power 98.5 satellite radio schedule. So just head on over to power985.com, uh, click on the live radio tab and scroll all the way down and you will be able to see all the lineup or what's in the lineup, uh, whether it's a top 40, Catherine and Company, Resilient You, Resilient you with Alicia Pazzoni, as well as Live On Air with Stephen Cuoco. We also have special editions that we are airing on Power 98.5. So don't forget, and please let all of your friends and family know, to download the Power 98.5 satellite radio, iOS, and Android app. Tune in on Alexa, whether it be in your home, in your car, or anywhere out and about you can take Power 98.5 Satellite Radio with you. We've got, again, <laughs> again, my very good friend, writer, director, illustrator, Jason Regusta. Jason is a horror writer, director, and illustrator. He has written and directed multiple short films, including Boy in the Dark, ZTV, Symphony for the Devil, and Mother Love. Uh, he is also a writer and illustrator, of ZTV, Undead Empire, a graphic novel expansion of his ZTV universe. By day, Jason serves as the editorial manager at Halan Entertainment, an NEP virtual studio company. Jason, thank you for being with us today. Thank you so much, Steve. Always a pleasure to be here. And it's it's always a pleasure to see your face and, you know, that, that promo video. I, I appreciate you going out of your way doing that. Uh, everyone loves to watch them. Oh, it's no problem at all. It was fun. So congratulations. The last time we spoke, it was in the making. We talked about it. We heard about it. And now it is real. It is official. The film is debuting. It is. It's so exciting. Um, yeah, the last time we talked, I think, was like right after we had completed it, uh, completed our, our segment of the film uh, Mother Love. And then all this crazy stuff happened afterward and, and festival runs for ZTV. And, you know, we went to Comic-Con with Symphony and and uh, uh, all of that, which I'm sure we'll get into. But, yeah, it was super, super exciting. And, and yeah, now um, we're going to be uh, premiering at the Brooklyn Horror Film Festival on October 15th, 
Um, we're actually in the afternoon. It's like 3.25 p.m. EST. Uh, and and uh, that's, that's going to be the world premiere of the film, which is so exciting. Uh, and then we'll have a second chance for people um, that are in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, we're also going to have our Midwest premiere at the Nightmares Film Festival. Um, and that takes place from October 20th uh, through the 23rd. And we don't, we don't, we're not able to really talk about, it hasn't been announced when it's going to be yet, but that information will be on my social channels if people, people check it out. Um, and then the film actually comes out officially on October 21st in uh, theaters and VOD streaming. So it's very exciting. Yeah. Our little, our little film has uh, grown into uh, a, a reasonable size oak, apparently. Uh, so we're very proud of it and it's, excited. It's been a year, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's crazy because, you know, um, originally, so the whole thing started when we were on the Clubhouse app uh, late one night. And uh, we were talking to uh, one of the best human beings in the universe, Sebastian Bazile. And he had a group of us that all loved horror. We were talking about films like Christine and Firestarter and all these old, like, like crazy horror films, Hellraiser. And he was like, well, we all love horror films. Why don't we make a, a horror anthology? And all of us were like, yeah, let's do that. That'd be cool. Um, and then our buddy Hank Pena, who was in the room, uh, turned in a script within four hours. He got so excited. And then Sebastian took the whole thing seriously. And then the rest of us had scripts to him within the next couple of days. Uh, we had a writer's room uh, meeting over Zoom that lasted seven hours, I think a week, week and a half later. Um, we addressed any notes and then we got the kind of green light to go shoot. They sent us a little bit of money. Uh, and then the first two shot within two weeks, uh, that was uh, Mark A. Pritchard, who's an amazing writer, director and author. Um, and then my buddy, uh, J dubs, uh, Mr. Jason Wilkinson, uh, those guys, I don't know how they shot so fast. We had a lot to prepare on ours. Uh, but these guys got that thing out there. Um, and then what was cool is by the time Fangoria did the first article on us, uh, we had these beautiful frames from what, uh, Jason and Mark had shot. And then I had illustrated a pre-production poster, uh, that was the skeleton with the cello, um, and the fire. Uh, so we looked pretty cool and like we really had our act together uh when that article came out um and then the the next step in the chain was when our uh other executive producer uh michael galvin uh he cut this amazing trailer uh he worked so hard on it he's, he's worked as a professional editor and, and all kinds of other things in the film business before um for for very big organizations like you know like uh, the actual channels on tv and stuff like abc that kind of thing nbc um and he he cut this amazing trailer and then that's the point when people started to take us seriously you know um and i was able to leverage that into us getting a comic-con panel um at the comic-con special edition in november which was an amazing event where i mean you know we all traveled to san diego we had only talked on this app you know on the clubhouse app basically every day for like you know a, a months or whatever it was but this was the first time we were all meeting in person. And it was such a magical, amazing experience. There was like 30 to 40 people at our panel from basically Clubhouse or people we met through that, um, which was insane. Um, and it was just the best time. You know, that week was so amazing. And then we all went to L.A. together and kind of had this other event where like 100 people showed up. And, you know, this was still during COVID. Like people weren't really having events like that. So. It was it was such a overwhelming experience to just be around people again, and then you know, in celebration of this of this film that we had put together, um, it was it was really magical. We we had finished the film though within seven months of that initial um, that initial meeting in mm -hmm. in the clubhouse room, which is that's a, a very quick turnaround to complete a, a feature film, even a horror anthology. So uh, yeah, it's was, it was pretty very very cool stuff. Is there going to be a sequel? Uh, they're currently working on, uh, it won't be entitled Symphony, but they are working on a second uh, Clubhouse Horror Anthology right now mm -hmm. with an amazing group of writers and directors. Um, I'm really excited for it, actually. They're going to go into production soon on that. Um, and this one's kind of bigger in scale and budget and everything. And, and uh, I can't wait to see what they do with it. It's going to be going to be really cool so yes yes there will be a follow-up coming um 
So stay tuned for that. Well, I hope to see, uh, you know, <laughs> you, uh, if, if you remember, you know, when I'm, I'm not, I'm not a fan, I'm a huge ally and advocate to people. So being your, your ally and your advocate for you and, and your team and uh, especially a big shout out to Mark Pritchard. Thank you for the follow on Instagram. And I am following you back. Uh, Jason Cohen and Chris Hahn from Netflix. Um, I hope to see them in one of these projects. Yeah, hopefully we'll get a chance to work with them. I mean, they, they have a great look. Uh, I could totally see them as like the the boyfriend who might be a killer, you know. <laughs> Uh, you know, it, it, they totally have that vibe or like brothers and something, you yeah. know, that we could, uh, yeah, no, they, they're, they seem like they'd be a lot of fun to work with and, and would, uh, do a great job. So uh, basically, you know, hand them a knife, cover them in blood. We're in a good, we're in a good place basically. And you're going to grab Netflix's attention cause they're still under contract and, and, uh, you know, this is, this could be a really, really great, um, without knowing relationship that can be a win-win for everyone yeah you know i i certainly would love to do that and and just do some great great work with them you know and make something cool that people will uh will like so yeah that'd be that'd be amazing awesome keep me posted on that and you know i'm here um mark pritchard he uh had shared on instagram saying thank you dark sky films for getting behind us and launching us stateside with such gusto looking forward to seeing you for the launch in brooklyn yeah it's very exciting uh mark is is one of the sweetest guys i know super talented guy a um, bit of a car fanatic um he has this beautiful, um, I, I'm not sure exactly what kind of car it is, but it's this beautiful classic car in his segment that's actually electric. So it's been upgraded to have this, the, a whole electrical system in it. And it's just so beautiful. Um, and, and that was one of my, uh, something we haven't in exactly released yet that I hope will be released at some point. I actually did uh, not only the pre-production poster and then the official poster, which is out now, um, but I also did a series of eight, individual posters for each of the shorts uh that we'll be releasing later hopefully um and one of my favorite ones to illustrate was was mark's because of that car and some of his other uh, visuals just a really beautiful short um actually every short in this thing is so amazing you know i, I we got so lucky with who was in the room that day um you know and I, i'd be i have to mention all of them quick uh there's Haley bishop who starred in host uh, and is an amazing actress as well as a, a writer and director. Um, Mark, who we mentioned, uh, Stephen Keller, who uh, works in art department uh, and production design on a lot of Netflix shows, actually, um, but also like just killed it with his short earworm. Uh, Kimberly Elizabeth, uh, who did one of my favorite ones. It's kind of almost like a Beetlejuice type thing uh, with ghosts. It's very fun. Um, uh, she's also uh, Kimmy Kill Zombie, who does Nightmare on Film St or on F Film Street, uh, which is a cool podcast. Um, Jason Wilkinson, who we talked about, Greg Green, who's an amazing writer. He worked with his partner Wes Driver, who directed his short The Keeper, which is a very classic, almost hammer horror, uh, you know, kind of like slow slow boil things uh, that pays off very well in the end. <laughs> and then uh, there was Nicole Carlson, who actually started off as a PA. Really? on my short and she worked so hard steve it was crazy she was like a blur doing the job of like 10 people you know she's mopping up blood she's doing this she's doing that i was like i was like wow nicole's really killing it and i guess you know michael and uh and seb who were on set for my shoot mm -hmm. um they noticed and they talked to her and she had a script and she was doing like an indie or a kickstarter uh to raise money uh to do a short at the time and it just happened to dovetail perfectly into what we were doing. So she got included as well and, and did a fantastic job with her short, uh, maternally damned. Yeah. Wow. What, what an yeah. all-star lineup. And, and it's crazy. Yeah. It's, it's like, we got so lucky just randomly who was in that room. <laughs> Can you imagine, I mean, seriously, the, the, the transition and the turnaround of what the film and television industry is like now, I'm going to tell you, the reset that the pandemic has caused all around, yeah. I see, you know, once again, to anyone that it did not turn in your favor in a positive way, um, I, I completely understand it. Uh, there are people that I know of 
that are close to me personally to where they did not, you know, see the benefits of the pandemic. Yeah. But at the same time, um, if, you know, with all due respect, I will say that there, there was a lot to where we really went into a reset and, you know, to really look at how that reset has really, you know, brought us together, what it's done on the clubhouse app, what it's done on other apps, how people are really utilizing social media and understanding, um, instead of being within sensationalism and being very self directed to oneself, there is this camaraderie, you know, just like what you have, Jason, and, and, and your other colleagues to where people have found a way to come together and thought to, yeah. you know, how can we be a unit and a unity? Um, I mean, we formed a family, yeah. you know, it's, it's like, we've basically been living in each other's ears, like every day after work, I, you know, we open a room, we're all hanging out in there, we have our core group. Um, and then we have our, our meetings, you know, our zoom meetings. Um, it's so amazing. Cause when you think about where that technology was like zoom just happened to hit, you know, and clubhouse came a little shortly after right at the exact right time, uh, for all this. And it's just brought the world closer. Everybody can work remotely now. Um, you know, like we were able to, to do the whole production for symphony remotely around the world, you know, Mark's Mark's in London or in the UK, um, Haley's in the UK. Um, we have people all around the country, um, but we're all right there in the Zoom meeting and just, you know, figuring the stuff out and then going off and doing our own thing and, and reporting back and, and sharing the, the data or whatever else to get it all done. Um, it, it really has just um, brought, you know, even though it kind of isolated us in a way, it forced us to reach out and connect, you know, worldwide through through technology and and i think at least for me it was is pretty extraordinary experience and and i don't know what it would have been like honestly that kind of isolation without something like clubhouse i think i don't know <laughs> i certainly wouldn't be sitting here um you know talking about this this awesome project and you know i probably would have gone i don't know crazy <laughs> like maybe i'd just be like some cave dwelling creature now i don't know uh, I mean, think about that. Just not being able to talk to anyone and being locked inside, I think, would be just horrifying. <laughs> but, yeah. Are you still – I'm not – I'm going to be transparent. I'm not on yeah. Clubhouse as much as I used to be. I think it's – Because I, I think we met. We met on Clubhouse. We did. And it yeah. was really doing – you know, I'm I, I'm just going to be transparent. It was at its best when I met you on Clubhouse. Now it's – um. I don't, it, it's changed a lot. So are you still on there? Is it working? Oh yeah. Well, there's a secret about Clubhouse, Steve, that I can tell you. Okay. It's not like the other social media um, platforms, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, it's not about volume. It's not about having thousands of followers or like reaching a ton of people. It's about creating a core group of professionals or a social group, people that you really bond with you know, um, that you then collaborate with, you do projects with, you get business deals going with, you know, um, or you just hang out, you know, it's about finding your tribe and, and, and spending time with them and having access to them, uh, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. Uh, that has been the strength for us. Like our favorite rooms have maybe like, you know, uh, six to 12 people in them. Uh, that's our core group, but we also have, so, um, you know, the guys who actually started the kind of horror community or the film community on Clubhouse were Jed Shepard uh, and Alex Neuer and then Sebastian uh, Bazile and, and a few others. Um, and basically, you know, um, Alex and, and Jed had a room called Shorts to Features that was on Mondays at 3 p.m. That still happens occasionally, but it would be great if they happen more often because I really miss it. Um, that basically gave advice to people about how to make like a two to three minute or, or like three to five minute short film and how to then uh, leverage that into making a feature, their first feature, which was an amazing thing. And, and both Jed and Alex had done that, you know, um, uh, Alex had directed a uh, sound of violence, which was, you know, premiered at like South by Southwest uh, had Jasmine Savoy Brown in an amazing film uh, for people that haven't seen it. I believe that one was available on Hulu through like Showtime and then you could always rent it. Uh, really, really amazing 
film about a woman who has synesthesia and and gets this elation from the sound of violence and and you know the sound of skulls crushing and 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 you know people suffering it's really intense uh and then jed was a writer on uh the film host and then dash cam which are two of the best uh found footage films made um you know uh ever you know <laughs> like, like i think a uh, host is rated as the scariest uh film by science you know like it was it was actually like they put like heart monitors or something on people and it just scared them more than every other film i guess it just narrowly beat uh sinister i believe which is pretty amazing accomplishment um but yeah so the other room was uh jed's clubhouse of horror i believe was the name of it uh and that was on thursdays and that would be at like four but he'd have these amazing guests like barbara crampton and kelly maroney and bonnie aarons um and all of these amazing like horror you know uh, uh royalty from around the world and those people showed up to our events you know when we went to to comic-con and, and, and to la we actually got to hang out with them and there's pictures of all that on on my instagram um and it's just been such an extraordinary thing you know i got to go have drinks with the nun from the country <laughs> she's like <laughs> taking photos with, and she's the sweetest woman in the world like bonnie's amazing i can't wait to work with her barbara and kelly in the future you know mm -hmm. Um, but you know, I grew up watching these films and, uh, you know, it was just such an amazing thing, um, to, you know, as someone who grew up in Connecticut and was pretty far from the film industry growing up, you know, now I'm in San Francisco, I go back and forth to LA and I, I work at Halon, which, you know, works on major motion pictures. But like, you know, when I started out just wanting to make films in Connecticut, I was, I couldn't have been farther from you know, the, my goal or, or like, I didn't know anybody in the industry. It was nothing like that, you know? Um, so having something like clubhouse where I'm actually talking to some of my, you know, some of the filmmakers uh, that I look up to and, and the actors that I think are amazing that I've always wanted to work with that have seen all their films, um, being able to kind of touch that and be a part of that and get to know them um, has just been, you know, such a cool experience. And, and has helped my work, you know, it's helped inspire me. Um, and, and it's filled me with confidence and, and just, you know, a lot of drive to, to get awesome stuff written and, and made so that I can keep kind of climbing up and, and get to work with everybody and, and just make cool stuff and, and hopefully scare the hell out of people. You know, <laughs> ideally, I'm going to tell you, um, I'll let you know if you scared me, I will. Please do. Yeah. I'll, just give me a, you could give me, it'll be like a rotten tomatoes rating for fear. You know, you can just give me a percentage, you know? Well, let me tell you this. I'm not going to do what they do on, on, uh, IMDB and other platforms. I don't oh my need God. to mention, but we all know that they give ratings before the film is even released. Or and even they're watched. so low. The IMDB <laughs> ratings are lower than any other rating. I don't know where they come up with them or what kind of anger inspires like it'll be a really good movie too. And it'll be like a six. Yeah. Like, well, how did they get to that number? <laughs> you know? Like, oh my goodness. That is yeah, insane. It. Oh, it man. is. It is. It is so refreshing to have you back on. Um, I, I, I'm just going to go ahead and um, as they usually say in Clubhouse, I'm going to reset the room, but we're not resetting okay. Jason. <laughs> um, <laughs> we have writer, director, illustrator, Jason Regusta. Jason is a horror writer, director, and illustrator. Uh, can we add producer? You're producing, right? I do. Yeah, I produce with All my right. producing partner, uh, Mar Marissa Gray. Um, who, who's amazing. She has a company called uh, Garbo Films. Uh, she was the producer on ZTV and Mother Love and um, another film that we're currently in post-production on called uh, The Alchemist's Daughter. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, hopefully as we move into features next, you know, that, that'll be what we'll be doing next, uh, producing together. So, yes. And then also uh, Crystal McKnight was another producer on the film. Um, and then Margaret Carrigan. Oh, my God, Margaret. <laughs> So she is the owner and operator of Pandora effects, which does all of our special effects and creatures on basically all my films going all the way back to boy in the dark. But she's also kind of a producer in her own way sometimes on some of the projects. Uh, and for, and with mother love, which was my segment of symphony, it was a family affair. Cause you know, Margaret was heading up the makeup department and like doing all the makeup effects and her and I designed the clown mask for the killer that's featured in all the, 
all the you know in the trailer and all of the um branding for for uh simply like the frames they've shown so far for the release um we custom made that like i did some concept art she did the sculpt and we we custom built that mask and that character which was so much fun mm -hmm. and uh, also i think walter welsh helped as well um he he ran the mask and and when they actually did the mold uh margaret and walter were both on the show face off um which was really cool and, and a lot of their people are, are from that um and then but also margaret's son rurik is in the film and he did an amazing job and you know directing like a, a five-year-old was a, a journey <laughs> but i always i knew rurik very well because I, I pretty much is like uh, godfather so um you know i know him I knew that I wasn't going to be able to direct him, but more create scenarios where he can kind of do his thing. And we would wrap that around it. And boy, did he deliver. Uh, I won't give any spoilers, but when our short ends, I think uh, Rurik has one of the greatest moments that really surprises people and uh, have reacted very strongly to. Um, and then Margaret's husband, Tony Aldrich, um, he played the the killer, the guy in the in the clown mask, which worked out really well because when he's grabbing the kid and stuff, it's his son, <laughs> so he's not as afraid. Um, and then Tony also is an amazing uh, blood guy; like mm. he does, he can make blood perform, and he can do it on the first take, second take, we're out. You know, like the guy, the guy nails it every time. He's one of my favorite people, as is Margaret and Rurik. Um, but yeah, it was such a tight knit group that we had um and then working also with christine garilaga our lead uh she's an amazing actress i mean she gives the 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 fear and 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 you know the whole scream queen vibe but she also comes off tough and dangerous and scary uh she had this whole range and then the emotional dramatic aspects of her being a mother uh to rurik's character um, I mean, she just delivers so much in such a short amount of time with so little dialogue that it's, it's really amazing. Um, and then also she's a writer director in her own right. Uh, it, it's basically a shooting star. I mean, she's going to be doing features very soon, I think. And, uh, she works very closely with her partner, uh, Steven, uh, Krimmel as well. Um, and currently, uh, her, Steve and I are doing a little short. We're doing a little uh, well, it's not exactly found footage, but we're doing doing a little short together that I'm really excited about as well. Awesome. I really appreciate that. And <clears throat> thank you to Mark Pritchard. Um, I did invite him to be an inner or to be a guest on my show. And oh, he'd uh, make a great guest. He yeah. said, thank you. That's very kind. I love to. So, Mark, if you're listening, um, we will set up the details. And, you know, once again, we've got Jason Regusta. I consider him a, a friend. Uh, definitely. I don't say that loosely. I do consider a friend, him a friend. Um, he has written and directed multiple short films, including boy in the dark ZTV symphony for the devil and mother love. If you have any questions or, or any comments, please head on over to power 985.com. Click the bottom icon in the right hand corner, send us your questions, comments, and the reason why I'm bringing that up is not only do we love to hear from our listeners, uh, current and new, um, and if you're a fan of Jason and any of his work, please let us know. And we happen to have um, a question for you from uh, okay. Aubrey from Wisconsin. Aubrey from Wisconsin. She okay. says that she is a huge Robert England fan. She would okay. like to know, would you ever consider working with Robert England, Rob Zombie, um, or uh, Quentin Tarantino? Oh, yeah. I love all those guys. I would love to work with any of them <laughs> or all of them. Absolutely. Yeah. And what's amazing, if you remember, and thank you for the question, Aubrey, I had... Thank you, Aubrey. <laughs> I had said... Um, that uh, when we were on a phone call with Jason, that uh, it take Quentin Tarantino and Rob Zombie and put them together and that's you. I remember that. Yeah, <laughs> you did say that. Robert that England. I like that one. And you did mention yeah. about Nightmare on Elm Street, I guess the podcast. So do you have connections? I mean, uh, with Robert England, is that somebody that you would strongly, you know, be? Yeah, I with? think. You know, once Symphony comes out and then, you know, I'll, it's still kind of up in the air what my first feature will be, but I have a pretty good idea because I, I might be writing it right now. I just started yesterday. Um, you know, once I get into a certain 
position, I could approach someone like Robert England and, and hopefully work with them. Uh, he just did an amazing job on, in Stranger Things um, in the last season of Stranger Things and is still killing it. You know, uh, mm -hmm. I grew up watching Freddy, you know, uh, Dream Warriors was one of my favorite films. Uh, you know, all those crazy quips and kills, you know, it was so imaginative and like gross. And, you know, I still remember the Roach Motel one and, you know, the one where he brings the arms out of the TV and, you know, puts her head through <laughs> and the puppet, God, the puppet in Nightmare 3, when he shows up and kind of cuts his own strings, he's like, creeping around. Oh, so God, much cool memories. Stuff. Yeah. I'm going to tell you Nightmare on Elm Street Part 1. I, my oh, friend yeah. Danielle, she... She had me watch that, and I'm going to tell you, um, I enjoyed it, but I did do everything to not be freaked out of like that being yeah. a possibility. That one is genuinely terrifying. Yeah. You know, uh, it gets inside your head, it even did. the way people die. Like when that poor woman, uh, you know, she's being rolled across the walls and blood's coming out of her, and you see her getting cut. It's just like, A, how are they even doing this? And B, that is terrifying. And the other guys just freak it out. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, seriously. And you just can't get away from them, you know, cause you got to sleep at some point, you know, it's just a ticking clock, no matter how many, how much coffee you drink or whatever else he is waiting at the end of that, of that, uh, <laughs> that line. <laughs> the way you put it, I, I, it brings me back to the memories of, yeah, I'm going to be honest. I said a prayer. I really did. I said <laughs> a go. prayer that, that would not, you know, things can be very subjective and suggestive. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, you know, just at that time, remembering when that film, you know, came out and, and, and everything, um, I was emotionally and mentally sensitive at that time. It wasn't yeah. too long to when, you know, I, I, it was like, what, in the 1980s, I was, I think I was still in foster care or something and, um, or I was adopted at the time. Mm -hmm. And, um, I was still recovering from my past and it, it, yeah. it was a mind fuck for me. I'm going to be honest after I watched sure. it. Sure. God. Yeah. I mean, it, it, I think it was a mind fuck for all of us, but yeah, like, I mean, think about it. A kid alone at night in their dark room, you know, that's what boy in the dark was my short, you know, it was about that. Like in, in it also in my TEDx talk that I did on storytelling, the opening of that was a story from my childhood and me being terrified in the dark with this overactive imagination and coupled with like insomnia, right? I couldn't go to sleep. I'm terrified of the dark and I'm just staring into it and things are coming out of the dark at me. You know, it's psychological, but it's like night terrors. It's like, you know, that kind of sleep paralysis. It's, it's scary shit. <laughs> Seriously? I'm not allowed to. No, you're oh, fine. Yeah, yeah. Really? It's, um, yeah, yeah. So in the, in the opening of my TEDx talk, you'll hear the story from my life. And then a friend told me, oh, you should turn that into a film. And that's what Boy in the Dark was. It was like a fictionalized uh, version of it, which was cool. So I, want... I, I feel you, you know, as far as, you know, something like Freddie. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if you shared about that on the last interview that we had. I think had. I did. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I must have. I must have mentioned it, I would imagine. Maybe. But to hear it know. now, it's powerful. Yeah, well, you know, we're talking about it in context and then connecting it to Freddy Krueger and, and being hunted that way would be, yeah, that's scary stuff. <laughs> and then, you know, with your own uh, trauma that you dealt with and, and dealing with that, you know, mm -hmm. um, I, I bet, you know, especially as a, as of, um, you know, as getting adopted and everything else, you know, just the feeling of being alone in the dark must have been terrifying. Yeah. And just um, the fact of, you know, growing up in the environment that I did uh, talk about sleep deprivation. I, I experienced yeah. that because you just you never know what could happen and where you could be. Um, it, yeah. it, it took at times. For me to fall asleep, I had to be completely emotionally and mentally exhausted. I mean, so exhausted to where, you know, when you pass out and you didn't realize you passed out, yep. that's the type of environment I grew up in. Yeah, because if you don't feel safe, how are you supposed to close your eyes and, and you know, be trusting enough to, to be able to sleep? Yeah. You know? And for me with the insomnia, it's the same thing. I basically, it, and it still goes on. Like I'm up till five or six in the morning every night uh, until I'm just exhausted. And then I go to sleep. Are you, that's how I get all this stuff done though. <laughs> are you, do you do chamomile tea or do you do anything to help with that? No, I actually go count. 
<laughs> you know, like my thing is like I try to stay sharp because I, I just know that I can't sleep until then anyway. So I'm more like coffee, Red Bull, just so I can stay like razor sharp when i'm writing or illustrating or whatever i'm doing um back in the day i used to do stop motion animation for lego um you know so that took a lot you know so i'd be slamming the red bulls for that but really yeah. now i don't need it every night though like depending on what i'm doing if i'm drawing i'm usually fine it's writing i got to stay like fully sharp so i can't be at all kind of doz- drowsy at all uh or even just a little out of it so uh that's when i'll hit the sugar-free red bulls or some coffee or something but you know, what's funny is whether I take it or not, I don't go to sleep until, you know, at least 4 a.m., uh, 4 to 6. Every night? Yeah, yeah. But it's fine because wow. what I found is I only need three to four hours of sleep. Uh-huh. I actually operate better that way. Back when I was a kid and I used to sleep like eight hours or more, I would be tired all day. I was like groggy. It was like too much sleep for me. But I didn't know at the time. Mm-hmm. Um and then once I discovered that, like, I could run really well on, on three to four hours. And, you know, that comes from doing films, right? Like, if you're going to set, you know, you have an early call time or whatever, you discover that you sometimes don't need as much sleep, I guess. But that's how I found out. You look really good for someone that gets three to four hours of sleep a night because there would be no way in hell I would do that. <laughs> no, 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 oh, no, thank no. thank you. Yeah, I mean, wow. you know, like I said, I think it's different for everyone. I wouldn't advocate for that for everyone. It yeah. needs to feel right. You know what I mean? Like if you wake up and you're not and you're tired, then it's the wrong amount, whatever that was. So, yeah. God bless you. Seriously. Oh, thank you. What other so we know that you've got a premiere in New York. Um you're yeah, doing something in that. LA. Do you, share with that with us. Oh, in LA? Uh, yeah. Um, the, like, how can people, or like, is it open to the public for the New York premiere? I Are you doing yeah, something so the, in LA? The New York premiere, uh, well, it's New York and then Columbus, Ohio uh, is what we have currently. Um, so we have the, uh, the Brooklyn Horror Film Festival is open to the public. Uh, we'd love to see you guys there. Anybody who wants to come that's going to be uh, in, in Brooklyn or New York uh, on October 15th. Um, like I said, it's at 325 in the afternoon, so it's actually an early one. Um, and, uh, and it's going to be so cool to see it on the big screen. You know, uh, That's the way to see it, if you can. Uh, and then we have the other event at the Nightmares Film Festival. October. It, it'll be someday between October 20th and the 23rd. We'll be announcing that soon. And that's in Columbus, Ohio. But there yeah. is no L.A. premiere just yet, or there's not going to be at all? Uh, currently, there there is not. Um, a public LA premiere. Um, but, you know, if, if something changes, uh, we will be announcing it, you know, if people follow. Uh, but there will be the, the also the wide release on October uh, 21st. Uh, so that one will be available around, I guess, around the world, probably, uh, at least on streaming. And then, um, and then uh, for the theaters will be more like kind of limited theatrical uh, in different places around the country in the U.S., any closing thoughts, Jason? Um, just that, you know, I'm, I'm just, I got so lucky that day, you know, being in the room, getting to work with all these amazing people, getting to know them, you know, they're like, you know, we have our symphony horror family now and, and, uh, you know, it's just so cool just getting to be a part of it and, and getting to hang out with these people and do something cool. Um, and then I'm also working on features with my writing partner, Robert Parter, uh, Patrick Archer. Uh, we've completed two feature uh, scripts so far, and we've got like 13 to go or something. It's crazy. The guy just keeps coming up with ideas. He's like a little, uh, <laughs> he's just like a gumball machine for ideas. He just keeps popping them out, and they're really cool. So, you know, we'll get going, and then we're like, oh, wait, what about this one? And we're breaking stories, and that's what we do at like 2 in the morning because um, he's up he's, he's up in Canada and uh, on a different uh, schedule. But, yeah, i um, super excited to really dig get my hooks into some features next and get away from the shorts although we're still doing shorts for fun and just to get stuff out there have you ever thought about doing a 24-hour film have you ever done that or seen that oh yeah i've seen i've seen people do that um and that's cool i think that's a really good thing for new people to film uh because it kind of shows them that it can be done like that uh for me though a lot of the times it's like if i'm going to put the resources and everything um towards a film i'm gonna want to focus on getting it right and not have it be just a product of whatever weird words they throw at you or whatever it is you know 
<laughs> um, that that's the only that's what's kind of put me off from the 24 hour and the 48 hour uh, things. Um, and some people can't really handle 48 hours not sleeping. Uh, that can get messy. And then crews drive home, you know, like tired, which is dangerous. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I I, <laughs> I try to get my people out on time. You know, we try to do more like 10 to 12 hour days. <laughs> Well, I, 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 I get what you mean. I totally get what you mean, though. And, and once again, big shout out to Aubrey in Wisconsin and big shout out to Mark Pritchard. I love when we get this. All right. He he's he, he commented. He went online. He went to power985.com and he sent in a, a comment. He says, this is Mark Pritchard. Just to say that Jason Regusta was pretty much single-handedly responsible for the entire anthology being invited to panel at San Diego Comic Con, which oh, let so us, to say. <laughs> which let us continue to punch above our weight for an indie anthology. That, in addition to creating the bulk of our collective artwork, almost enough for us to forgive him having. The longest runtime in the anthology. Oh, we're he's still t- coming at me. <laughs> we're tight as a family, but competitive. <laughs> I love you, Mark. Um, yeah, it, but to, to be fair, though, I wasn't single-handedly. I, I did, you know, come up with the idea to do it, and and I submitted the application. But I was armed with all the great stuff that him and Jason had done, and and you know, with the imagery, and then what. Um, Michael did with that trailer, you know, because I was able to send links to the Fangoria and also a huge thanks to Fangoria for supporting us and, you know, and really kind of launching us in the beginning and giving the initial um, uh, press to us. You yeah. know, uh, it was it was so cool of them. We love everybody over there. Um, and and yeah, like and also they came to our premiere like Angel and um, yeah, it's just so cool of them to, to take an interest in our project and uh and yeah, and then and then all the other um, uh, horror outlets have been picking it up and, and sharing it as well. So um, yeah, it's it's just been really cool, um, and uh, and we're just super excited about it. But yeah, doing the panel was like it was my kind of mind blowing. <laughs> we're like this little indie horror film that gets to do a panel at Comic Con. It was a decent sized room, you know. We had like <laughs> you know fit like fifty people or something. It's crazy. So it was pretty cool. I appreciate you, Mark, for that uh, for that uh, that dropper. What do you want to call it? Us a spoil <laughs> alert. We had a spoil alert here. Thank you, Mark Pritchard. Oh, was it? <laughs> yeah, I'll call it a spoil alert. That's what they usually say in media. I guess you know, spoil alert, like something like, check this out. It's a positive oh. thing. Yeah, it's a good thing. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, thanks, Mark. Mm-hmm. Um, Jason Regusta, writer, director, producer, and illustrator for all things Jason Regusta. You can head on over to his Instagram, Jason Regusta, J-A-S-O-N-R-A-G-O-S-T-A. Your Facebook, Jason, is Jason.Regusta, R-A-G-O-S-T-A. And then we've got Twitter, Jason Regusta. Uh, any closing thoughts? Um, just that it's always a pleasure, Steve. Uh, to get to talk to you and uh, thank you so much for having me out and uh, letting me talk about our our, uh, our fun little horror film that will be hitting the world very soon absolutely thank you for everyone for tuning in today live on air with Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio Mark Pritchard um, Aubrey from Wisconsin thank you for the comments and the uh the share and uh I'm saving that message from Mark I I like that 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 was really good Um, Mark's awesome he's one of my favorite people I can't wait to have him on yeah no he's he's great he's fantastic and he has so many cool projects and things to talk about he'd he'd be amazing and he's in the UK he is yeah that's why they got they got a great personality so you know hey he, he definitely lives up to that. <laughs> um, anything else you want to share before we close? I know you got a uh, two o'clock. Yeah, no, I'm I'm good. I, I basically the big thing is symphony and our release and, and our festival premieres. Uh, if you're in the area and you're able to do that, then come out and see us. You know, we're going to be doing Q and A's. We'll be there in person, um, and then also, you know, when when the film comes out on October 21st, we can really use everybody to stream it that weekend you know right away it helps us get onto like 
you know, like when the algorithm and stuff or like mm-hmm. leave reviews, especially if you like it uh, <laughs> and uh, on Amazon or wherever else. Um, and and yeah, just please uh, come and check out our film. Uh, it started with just a, a, a bunch of people uh, in a room that just decided to do something creative. Very little money was spent on it. It's like a fraction of the budget that would be for most feature films. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's already grown into such an amazing thing. I mean, God, uh, re- theatrical release. I-, I could never imagine it in a thousand years uh, that it would ever be in theaters when we did it. We always thought it would go straight to streaming. But um, I, along the way, people were just like, hey, wait, this is actually good. <laughs> and it just kind of keeps climbing like what Mark was saying about punching above our weight. We've done that consistently from the beginning, and we've just climbed, climbed this this mountain <laughs> to where now we're here, and we're just super excited to share it with the world. Having this relationship, this friendship with you, and and where we're at, and from how we started um, several years ago, it's um, it's really truly an honor. Like when I watch your film, I'm going to watch it in such a way because it really is a privilege. Uh, I don't know if most people know this, but to know somebody who is part of the project, the writer, producer, director, uh, the, the, you know, the music score, actors, all the above, it really enhances and emphasizes the feeling and the mood and the connection to the film and to the project when it's watched. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and actually, our composer, David Fezlian, did an amazing job. Uh, he, he scored my short and a bunch of the other ones and kind of served as the overall uh, composer. And, you know, music is a very big part of symphony, as you can imagine from the title. Uh, and there's this very special song in it that has a special version in each short um, that will make a very awesome playlist at some point. Um, and each one's unique and, and very cool. Uh, and so thank you, David. You did a great job. Can you give us one more time, Jason, the uh, information to the film festival? Yeah. So uh, it's the Brooklyn Horror Film Festival, uh, which will be Saturday, October 15th at 325 p.m. Uh, EST. And tickets are available uh, to purchase along with festival passes uh, through a link in my link tree uh, on Instagram, if anybody's looking for it. Um, and then also for the Nightmares Film Festival, uh, that one will be taking place from October 20th to the 23rd, or yeah, yeah 23rd, um, in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, and uh, and I'm not sure exactly what day or time yet, but we'll be announcing that as soon as it comes out. Um, and then it will be released in theaters and VOD streaming October 21st. Awesome. And all great things, Jason Regusta. Instagram and Twitter, Jason Regusta. J-A-S-O-N-R-A-G-O-S-T-A. And Jason's Facebook is Jason.Ragusta. Thank you again for being with us today. It is truly an honor, truly an honor to be here. And I'm really surprised of how you guys were able to pull this all together in such a short amount of period of time um, for this Pretty project. wild, huh? Very yeah. wild. Very unheard of. Thank you so much, Steve. And the honor is mine. Absolutely. Always. Thank you. Thank you again to everyone. Uh, Mark Pritchard, Aubrey out of Wisconsin. You guys help make this station power 98.5 satellite radio what it is today. Uh, Check our schedule, power985.com. Go to live uh, radio um, or um, listen live. And you'll be able to see the schedule, all upcoming uh, shows, Catherine and Company, Resilient You with Alicia Pazzoni, and more. We have upcoming, we just uh, had Oliver Trevena today. We had Jason Regusta today. We've got Isaiah Campbell on the 29th at 1 p.m. Pacific. We got Sean Say, October 6th, 12 p.m. Pacific, and more. Thank you for being part of our family as we appreciate you and all that you do in the world. Jason Regusta and Mark Pritchard and everyone else. Thank you for being you. And we look forward to having you on our show now and always. And in the future, you are here with us live. Live on air with Stephen Cook on power985.com. Socials and let's connect.